is good, Grey Gang. We're here today. It's it's kind of cold. Not gonna lie, man. I'm wearing a hoodie. I thought it was supposed to be warm. I was wrong. Anyways, if you've been a long time Grey Gangster, or at least for over a year, you'll know that last year we did pool ponds. Now, if you don't know, pool ponds are pretty simple. You get a swimming pool and you put fish into it and make it pond. Kind of self-explanatory. But last year we had all kinds of stuff, and then we had to, you know, we had to put them back because we had some problems, okay? Everything literally started dying. Like, I don't know what happened. They were good for like a month or two, and then everything literally just started going downhill fast, and everything started floating to the top. But there is one thing that we ended up keeping over the winter, and that is these minnows. And they have done absolutely amazing. Now, my original plan was to now get these minnows and go introduce them back into the streams where they came from but it ended up i just ended up keeping them and kept them over the whole entire winter now we'll say this we had like 35 to 40 minnows and only two of them died for random reasons one of those reasons is that one of them actually jumped out don't know how that happened but he did it maybe his cousin's michael jordan you never know but today we're actually going to upgrade we're going to get some bigger fish and we're not going to mix them in with them either we're going to use the second pool pond. This one's water is crystal clear. There's not been anything in it all year, except some little weird looking tadpoles. I don't know if you can see them. There's a bunch right here on the side. I mean, there you go. They're kind of swimming now. I don't know if those are tadpoles or mosquitoes. It's kind of cold, so they're probably just frogs. I'm going to have to lower the water level. That way they don't jump out as easy. And all I got to do for that is bring this hose down some. Just like that, and now it is going to empty out. The water level is going to go down to there. But now let's stop wasting time, guys. I'm ready to get this done, okay? I already got my fishing pole there. Usually to catch some bluegill, I would go with bread. But with the coronavirus, like literally everything is on a shortage now, including bread. So we don't have any bread to waste, okay? Even though fishing is not a waste, but... It's up to you. So we're going to have to go with something different. Something maybe more organic. We're going with worms. If I can find some. Now wish me luck here because I don't know how active worms are whenever it's cold outside. Ah, we're going to try our best. We got a few planks of wood here. Hopefully we can just flip this over, grab a few, and then we can go fishing. There's a couple worms, but yeah, we'll go ahead and collect what's here. Let's see. We got this one. That one's pretty small. This one also pretty small. So Let's see what's under this one. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a big one. That's a good one right here. Honestly, that should be plenty to catch what we're wanting. We're not wanting to get too many because we're still trying to test it out. Once we get back from fishing i'll tell you what happened last year we got a small handful of worms but i think that'll be good <laughs> all right we got the worms let's go fishing hit me baby one more time And here we are, we're at the pond right now. I'm gonna go ahead and hope that I catch some fish and get some water in here. That way I won't have to wait around whenever I actually do catch a fish. I'm not gonna put a ton of water in it, just because it's, we're not going far. We're only going like a couple hundred yards whenever we catch them. This pond's pretty close to the pool pond anyhow. Let's get us a worm out of this rinky-dink looking outfit water bottle. Oh, there we go. Now, it is kind of cold today, like I was saying earlier, so I don't really know how the fish are going to react. They have been pretty active recently, but I don't know. It's coming a little cold front. I don't know how they're going to react. Hopefully, I should be able to just come over here and drop something in, and maybe they'll come up and eat it, but I don't know. We'll find out pretty quick, though, that's for sure. Yep, it didn't take long. We already got us one. There we go, son. Looks like a purebred bluegill, too. We know that it's a bluegill because of the way it is. There he is. We're going to get about, I don't know, we'll get a few more just to test out the pool pond. And from what I could tell, they're here. They're eating pretty good. I just threw it in, waited a few seconds, pulled up on it, and we had one. We'll just let it sink. It's really just a basic worm on a hook. We're fishing it weightless. Super effective. The only downside to this technique is that your max throw is about eight feet because it doesn't weigh anything. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Sweet. This one is another bluegill. We know that because it looks like one. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep the first three, man. Ah. Well, the first three that we can keep in our hands. Everybody, give it up for Jimmy. Number two on the catch is Rob. Our second contestant on you're coming with me because I kidnapped you. I tell you what, we may catch all of our fish on this one piece of worm. This isn't even a whole worm. This is just one that broke in half. There he is. Got him. Just like that, guys. We are killing it. Oh, that's Marcus. We just caught Marcus. Come back here, dude. Marcus is huge. Dude, stop. Stop. I'm not playing games today. There you go, Marcus. That literally took, let me check the GoPro, that took four minutes to catch three fish, just like that. A minute of that time was literally just putting on the worm. I tell you what, guys, we got a few more worms in here, but I'm not going to use them. That's not really what I want to do. I think three bluegill right now is max. We want to make sure the water quality is all good and everything. I'll tell you a little bit more about what happened last year whenever we get up there and the reason why we're actually starting with three. But with the rest of these worms, let's feed them to the minnows because they, they'll go crazy for them. And out there, I don't know if y'all can see that. That's actually the worm that we caught these three on and well, we're taking it right back home with us. You know what? The coronavirus can keep the bread. We don't need it. We got worms. We got the real stuff. Uh, 
You know, being a professional fish transporter is not an easy job. I mean, you got to drive really slow and make sure that the fish don't jump out. But you also got to make sure that the water doesn't splash out, which happened in early 2018. Killed all of them, but that we're not going to talk about that. It's not much of a living, but it's an honest living. We are back, and the pool pond is actually self-measured, whatever. The water level is exactly where we want it. We're gonna come on over here and check on these guys. Now, I did say that one was Mark, but I'll be honest, we're not gonna name these fish simply because what happened last year? Well, we had about five or six. We named them all and gave them good names, and then they died overnight. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're not gonna do that this time. Hopefully. But I kind of mentioned down there at the pond that I was going to tell you what happened last year. So just bear with me for a minute and let me tell you. Now last year we had this same pond, but it's actually scooped back a little bit. It wasn't it wasn't hanging out. Since it was just a random pool of water, we knew that we needed to get oxygen in there somehow. So what did we do? Well, we got this little swimming pool filter and hooked it up to where it would actually aerate the pond. And it was working good. Like it really did. It worked really good for a long time. And then the fish started using the bathroom and then one thing led to another. The filter actually started getting getting clogged up because there's so much junk in the pond which is understandable i mean fish eat fish use the bathroom kind of just how it is you know well weeks ticked by and the water started getting extremely green like it was greener than green i don't know so we thought that it was algae so we got this stuff started putting into it algae fix it worked a few times then it kept getting green so he put more turned out algae wasn't the problem Ended up poisoning a lot of them. Which was bad. Wait a minute. I'm not even telling the right story. The story I'm trying to tell you is why we're not naming those fish. I'm sorry, but let me restart. Last year we had this pond scooted back. There was no way to fill it full of rainwater, so we had to fill it up with the water with a water hose. The water from the water hose had a lot of weird minerals, which wasn't good for fish. When we put the fish in, they died. Okay, that's the story I meant to tell you, but somehow I got off track early. Then for round two last year, we had this stuff is aqua safe. This wa treats the water. It makes tap water safe. It works great. But then we had the bright idea. How about we just hang it off there, let it fill up with rainwater, because rainwater is good for fish. And turns out it was perfect. And so simply by hanging just a little bit of the pond out here where rainwater can get in it that solved two problems one the minerals in the water to make it safe for them and two it actually aerates the water because just like a real pond the water gets aerated whenever it rains and new water comes in and let's say the water gets extremely green here's the plan we're going to lower the water level right before it rains plug it back up let it rain boom we just switched out brand new water and it's fresh water too because it like came out of rain but now that i've told you 16 stories you didn't need to know let's go ahead and put these fishies in there i think they'll do really good i don't think they're gonna be able to jump out if i had the water level any higher i think they could jump out but at this level i think we should be good i'm just gonna dump them in as is since we're not gonna name them or anything we're not gonna give them any like ceremonial oh wrong pond oopsie come on in fishies we're gonna name them one fish two fish three fish four bada boom bada bing we're done now when you look in here it's really hard to see them but mainly because they're over there right now they're all just huddled up over there you can see them you got one two three and then four which is me but for now they're just going to stay in there and chill they'll be like that for a few days they probably won't eat for a few days simply because they have no idea what's going on but these guys have been here all winter they are ready to eat son let me get out these worms and try to feed them i usually feed them crushed up dog food and they go absolutely bananas for it let me open this bad boy up i don't really know how we're going to do it yet one at a time i guess so i want to be sure to throw it where i where can watch it ready all right, there's the worm. Let's watch it. It's going to die pretty soon. Little man got it right there. No, he's just looking at it. Come on, dude, eat it. There he goes. He got it. Let's go over here for the next one. I don't know what, why they're all being shy. Ugh. There we go. That's a big old worm coming out. This is the biggest one. That'd be good. There we go. Big worm's in there. He should be wiggling. He should get eaten any moment. What is wrong with these fish? Why are they not eating the worm? This right here is one reason why I really wanted to upgrade away from minnows. It's because they're literally so dumb. Like, I'm not even kidding. They are so dumb. They are like no other animal I've ever seen before. I come here and feed them every day at the same time, and they are still afraid of me. Like, why can't you be like a dog? Why can't you like me? Even bluegill that we had last year, they started coming up and eating out of my hand. But minnows, my goodness. Goodness, they just never get the hang of it. They never understand anything. They've got a brain smaller than anything I've seen before. I don't even know that much about astronomy. They may not even have a brain. But gosh, figure they'd eat the worm right there. What are they doing? They're so dumb. I feed them every day and they still think i'm here to kill them i don't know they're lost welcome back it is actually day two of this vlog i tell you what i live in kentucky so it's raining today i don't know guys wishful thinking i put on some shorts because i wanted it to be warm turned out it doesn't work right now my goats are going crazy for an unknown reason probably because they're bored 
I don't know, maybe they're just happy to see me. How you doing, Chip? Yeah, good to hear, good to hear. How's your mom? Ah, good to hear that too. Glad you're doing good. And in my pocket right now, I have a new gun we're about to go shoot. But first, I want to tell you about the KG Spring Fishing Sale. Now, we've been doing this sale for the last couple years now, and it's where every spring we basically just do a giant 10% off everything fishing related. So that means the new yeet worms that we've released, the fishing fanny pack, the tackle boxes, the spinner baits, the fishing scales, even the fishing shirts, anything on the website fishing related, use code KGSPRING10 and that's going to give you 10% off everything fishing related. But now on to shooting guns. As y'all know, all the coronavirus, but then one thing that I find interesting is that since the coronavirus has like kind of getting more popular, guns and ammo along with toilet paper, are selling like crazy. Now, the toilet paper, I really don't understand. But then the guns and ammo, I don't really understand that either. Like, toilet paper has nothing to do with a coronavirus. But then again, neither does guns. And I mean, I guess people think like, I don't know, maybe it's about to go down and we're going to, I don't know, fight each other. But I just, I just, if you're thinking that, I don't know about you, man. If it gets that far, I will live in a cave. Like, yesterday I got on one of the biggest ammo sale sites and they were out of ammo. Like, people seriously stocking up with this. I don't know. I just think it's kind of crazy. An old Colt 38 special. This one is a police positive if you know anything about that. Standard six shooter right there. Now fun fact I did not get this because of the coronavirus. I got it just because I got it. You know what I mean? Now fun fact about that gun. They quit making them after the 50s. I'm not sure about the exact date. It might even be the late 40s but they've not been made in like 70 years. Which is really cool. So I'm going to throw on the GoPro, load this sucker up in my socks and boots and rain and snow jacket in Kentucky. I don't know about Kentucky, dude. It's always raining here. <laughs> well, here's a fun fact for you. My GoPro battery's dead. Can you believe it? Because I can't. I charged it yesterday. I'm just going to have to set the camera right there. Hope it doesn't fall because there's a massive water puddle under there. But we're just going to have to shoot it like this. Anyways, here it is. Give you a little bit closer look. It is just an overall really nice revolver. It is a Colt, and I don't know that much about Colts. But it is chambered in 38 Special, which is a pretty nice round, and I do not have hearing protection in because I forgot it. Depending on how loud it is, we got 10 shells. We may not finish them if it, like, literally makes me go deaf. But anyways, boys, here we go. Can't hit the broad side of a barn. I think that's all we got. Pretty good. I mean, not accurate, but... And then to push them out, we got four more shells. We'll go ahead and sling those in them. Then we'll go over there and sit with the goats and talk about the coronavirus. Two-handed this time. There we go. Ow. That kind of hurt. Missed it. Last shot. Missed it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really bad at shooting, but I don't know, guys. Those just didn't connect for me. There we go. Police positive. I like it. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Got it warmed up. Deafened me a little bit this morning. That's exactly what we need on a good corona day. Now I just want to jump in here first and say that I'm not a doctor and I'm not a, a virus technician or something. I ain't no professional. I'm just going off what I heard on the news. And that is that we should wash our hands a lot and don't cough in people's face. Sounds like a pretty good idea. And if you can, don't be around a lot of people up close. Yeah, that's about all I got. We're going to try to get y'all some solid content because I know you're probably in the house doing nothing. Here you go, Chip. Got something to say? Chip looks like a horse dude why is she so big now and one thing leads to another i don't know where i heard fishing in the rain guys at least the crayola virus isn't contagious through water but a lot of y'all have actually showed interest in the yeet worms so i decided i was actually just gonna come out here and show you a little bit about how i would use the yeet worm for bass in kentucky the last time i was using them on camera i was actually in north carolina and it's or south carolina i still don't know which one it was i'll be honest listen guys ain't nothing else happening today the color we're gonna be using today is snow white it's a white color worm with gold and silver flakes in it <sighs> First thing I'm going to go over is my preferred rigging. Wacky rigs are good. Texas rigs are good. But my favorite way is actually a weightless Texas rig. We're just going to pull that one right off the top. That should be great. These do come in packs of 12, so if you do lose one, you got plenty. For specifics, this is a 3 aught offset round bin. I'm just going to throw it right around these edges right here. Since it is spring and it's kind of warming up, the fish are just going to get shallower and shallower. And eventually, they're going to be right up on the bank. So I'm going to start just throwing it right here on the bank. Another way I like to fish this whenever it's rigged like this is uh, just jerking it pretty fast where it's like literally an inch under the water and then oh no way i just had a fish dude and then let it pause for like one two one but it's basically like a top water bait that you have the versatility to pause it if a fish is kind of 
nose in that. And just a second ago in the video where I said I'll wash your hands and uh, don't get out in giant groups, I guess I really didn't do a great job or a good job at all of actually helping y'all. So instead of just saying something like that, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing because of the coronavirus. The main thing I'm doing is uh, kind of just staying outside, honestly. If you like to go outside, if you have plenty of space to go outside, not like outside in the city, but like outside in the middle of nowhere, if you can just go outside and go fishing or something, hey, that's perfectly fine. You're not, you're not going to be close enough to people to contract or give off the virus. So like if you like doing hikes or you want to go shed hunting, go shed hunting. If you want to go fishing, go fishing. If you want to sit in your bed and watch YouTube videos, sit in your bed and watch YouTube videos. That's perfectly fine. The things that you do want to limit is like going out maybe the grocery store. Try to go there as little as possible. I know you got to get food, but try to limit the amount of times that you do go. One thing I have been doing lately is eating what is already in my house. So instead of going out and just buying more food at like KFC, I've been making that. And, and by doing that, we're kind of killing two deer with one javelin. Because one, you're cleaning out your refrigerator. And two, you're not really getting out in public, so there's no way to give off or contract the virus. Ooh, another really good thing you can do if you're bored, you can go shoot your guns. Like, I know that right now it's raining and that may not be the best time, you know, get out and shoot a gun because it may rust or something. But if it's not raining in your area and you have plenty of land like this, because as y'all know, it's March, most of the deer, if not all of them, have went ahead and shed all their antlers. So about all the antler that's going to be out there for the year, they're already out there. So you can clean out your backlashes, get all your fishing stuff ready. Go browse kindlegray1.com slash shop and pick out some fishing stuff. Use code KG Spring 10. Oh yeah, and that's one thing. Those worms right there, they, they're actually included because they're anything fishing. So you can go pick up a couple packs of those. I price them really reasonably, I think. They're only $4.19 per pack. And with the promo code, it should take off like 42 cents. So you're looking at a good 12 pack of worms for under $4. But right now, while I'm trying to retie my hook, I want I want y'all to do one thing in the comments. I want y'all to go down and comment what kind of ideas do you have for things that we can do? Like, what are some things that you've been doing to have fun during this time of not being able to go anywhere that we might not be thinking of? I want y'all to go down in the comments and tell us what you've been doing. That way, uh, you know, maybe we can get some ideas. And so that I can get some ideas ideas that I can do because I'm bored. I'm not here with you guys. I'm just a normal human bored to death just like you watching YouTube and TikTok for six hours a day. Bored completely out of my mind. And while you're down there, like people's comments that you think are great so that I'll see them. And turn on the post notifications. That's really important because y'all's bored. I'm going to try to post more videos. Y'all don't need to be waiting around. You need to know whenever I post. I know what you is doing. You ain't got nothing to do. Go ahead and turn on them post notifications. I know you ain't doing nothing else. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. There he is. Yes! No! Oh, this is something big. This is something big. I don't know if it's catfish or a bass. Oh, it's a big bass. We got a big bass. Oh, 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 on the yeet worm bait. Oh, no, no, get out of there, get out of there. Oh, oh gosh, he's gonna run me into a tree. Let's get him over the tree, get him over the tree, get him over the tree. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, we're gonna bring him on over here. We're gonna bring this guy right on over here to the mule. Oh, it's a big one, son. It's a good one. Right there on the yeet worm. Can somebody say yeet? There we go, son. That is a good bass, too. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even know these things were in here. Can somebody say yeet? That is a stinking cannonball. Oh, my goodness. Goodness! I'm going to be completely honest, guys. I did not expect to catch a fish out of here whatsoever. But that is a big fish, especially for this pond. Now, he's not massive. He's not what I would classify as a stud magnum, but he is a good little stud. I'm going to take a picture of him with the yeet worm, dude. That's the yeet worm's first fish since release. And the dogs go wild. Give me some. Give me some. We'll let this girl go back. She looks like a Rhonda to me. See you, Rhonda. Oh yeah, turned upside down, passed out for a second, goes right back down to the deep end. This pond usually doesn't yield fish, but when it does, they're pretty good fish. I say that all the time. Hey, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already, and turn on the notification bell. But also, can we get this video to 4,000 likes? I don't know, you've not been able to do it the last few times. And then watch this video, or this video, if you're bored, which you very well may be.